What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. Except for this week, we're actually not going to be doing a model. I thought I'd change it up and do something a little bit different. So lately I've been getting a lot of requests to do more tutorial based videos, specifically on how to export my textures from Substance Banner and hook them back up in Maya. So I thought this week would be a great opportunity to show you exactly how I do that. And I'm going to show you with this little turtle. So without further ado, let's just get started. Alright, so starting off in Substance Painter, I have this little turtle model that we're going to use as our base mesh. And we're going to texture this little thing really fast and then export those textures to hook up in Maya. So the first thing we got to do since I just opened this is bake out some textures so I can apply those materials. So I'm going to quickly go over to my texture set settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps, and I can choose an output size. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to do 2K and then make sure to check on your used low poly mesh as high poly mesh since we only have one mesh that we're working with and then I can bake out those textures. So we're going to go over to the materials tab here and then go find a material that we can apply to this turtle. So I have this material I found on Substance Source. You can jump on there and download it if you'd like to add it to your library. And it looks pretty cool. It's like a wood carving turtle that was left outside for a while. And let's say this is a material that you were really happy with and you wanted to export. So we're going to go ahead and export this. So what we're going to do is go up to File and go to Export Textures. This is going to bring up a window that gives you a few settings depending on how you want to export these textures. So the first one is your output directory. That is just where you do you want to actually export those textures to. So what we're going to do is just select my desktop and I'm going to create a folder for these textures. So turtle textures seems pretty fitting. And then we're going to select that folder. So now all those textures, once you press export, will actually go to that folder. Next up is your output template. So this is depending on where your model is going to be used. In this case, because we're going back to Maya and I'm running with Arnold, it makes sense to choose Arnold AI standard. If I was going to use this in Unreal, I could go down to Unreal or Unity or depending on whatever. It's really nice because they give you all these presets which makes your life a little bit easier and they give you different maps. So if you're curious what maps those actually give you, you can switch over to this output template tab. And this, depending on which one you click, will show you all the maps that they preset for you. So with Arnold, they have these and so forth. So if you're curious and you want to add specific maps or you want to remove some, you can go ahead and do that here. Otherwise, we're going to jump back to the settings. So for the rest of these, we're going to keep them default. If you did have a file type preference, you could choose that or a file size. Now we already set this when we went to go pick our textures, but if you had a different preference afterwards, you could change that here. But we're just going to leave all this as is and go down to export. So once Substance does all the magic, you are ready to go. You have those textures exported to that folder we created and we're ready to jump into Maya so we can apply those. So let's jump over to Maya. All right, so now quickly jumping over to Maya, we have our untextured turtle that we need to apply those textures to. So the first step would be making sure that you have an AI standard material applied. Since we set that as our output template in Substance, we need to make sure that that's applied to our turtle. So I'm gonna right click him, go down to assign new material, and I can go over to Arnold and apply an AI standard surface. That way we have all the correct settings so we can apply those textures correctly. So if you go ahead and look at our folder that we exported those textures to, you can see how it gave us these five different maps. So we have a base color, metalness, normal, roughness, and a height. Now, usually I would not use this height map, and I would normally just exit that in our template. Now, I kept everything default, so it did give us our height map, and that is can be useful in different situations. So this could be handy depending on, let, let's say you're doing like a terrain, and you want to just add your height map as a, like a displacement map. That could be beneficial and useful for you. But when it comes to a model like this, I'm not going to use that. Now I don't want to get into node based textures for this tutorial, I want to keep it very simple but I will show you at the very end really quickly how I would assign this height map and why I wouldn't as well. So let's start off with the base color. So choosing our turtle I'm going to go over to our AI standard surface. Now I can give this a name so turtle texture is fitting. Then we can go over to the color tab here. So I'm going to click this little button here, the checkered and we can choose a file since we have a file to assign to it. So click in this folder, I can go ahead and find that folder that we created earlier and I can click on my base color. Now when you assign that you're not going to see anything and that's simple, that's just because this texture toggle option up here is not 
turned on. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and you'll be able to see some textures. Now we still have a little bit more work to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So this button up here is your back button. It basically goes to the previous menu and this is super handy when you're sending your textures. So I would get in the habit of clicking this. So when you press this guy, it's gonna go back and we can move down the list to our next material. So we have metalness. So let's click on this and we can go assign a file. We can go find our metalness texture to apply. So we can click on this guy and press open. So there's a few settings you have to do. Now color space is set to sRGB. Now for every texture that you have or material, basically all of these different maps, you wanna set this to raw except for your base color. So in other versions of Maya, it's just a drop down. I know in 2022, they have this new side option. So under utility, you'll find raw. But you wanna make sure that this is set to raw and that's to all of your maps except for your base color. And there's one more setting under the color balance. You wanna make sure you have this alpha is luminance check. So these are the only two settings you really need to worry about. And we can hit the back button here and move on to our next one, which is roughness. Let's click this roughness and we can go assign that to this file. So selecting the roughness, I can open that. And just like we did to the metalness, we're gonna go switch this over to raw and I can go down and make sure that alpha is luminance is checked. And last but not least is our normal map. So that's under geometry. So if you drop this menu down and under bump mapping, you're gonna select this guy and choose another file once again. Now you're not gonna add it to your bump depth, you're just gonna add it to your bump value. So we're gonna click this, select the folder, and we can go ahead and select normal. Now there's a few settings that are important for normal maps. So once again, you wanna switch this over to raw, and alpha is luminance already comes pre-checked for you, so you're fine for that one. But if you hit the back button, you're gonna to come to a different menu. And this is important to make sure that you switch your this option right here from bump to tangent space normals. Now I'm pretty confident in future updates, this is probably gonna come standard, but for the time being, you need to make sure to switch this over. Now you already see that the model looks a little bit better. So let's go take a look and see how this texture looks. Now, if I go up to Arnold and go open Arnold render view, and we press play, obviously it's gonna be dark and you're not gonna see anything. And that's just because we don't have light in our scene. Now I don't wanna get into a whole lighting tutorial. I wanna keep this really short and simple. So let's just quickly go up to Arnold and add a sky dome light. And then if we go back to our previewer, we can see what it looks like. Cool, so those textures look good. Now it's quite small. So let's just go back to these render settings here beside our hyper shade. And let's just quickly scroll down and change the preset up to 1080. That way when I go back to our render preview, it's just gonna be a little bit larger and a little bit easier for us to see. So things are looking good. It just looks a little bit different and that's just because of the white background and probably the ground plane having a little more shadow. So let's just quickly go add a ground plane, scale this up. go select these edges and I'm just going to extrude them up. Now this isn't necessary. This is just for the render since we're comparing it to substance. So let's try to get it close. I'm going to double click this, give it a little bit of a bevel. And just move it down a little bit. So we jump back into our renderer. You can see it's looking a little bit better. There's a little shadow now underneath it. Now a good habit to get into if you are rendering is obviously create a, a camera so you're not rendering from perspective. So I'm gonna quickly, just for the sake of this, I'm gonna go into my camera. Now if you hit this, just show your resolution gates, you can actually fit your model correctly into your render and you can actually see the size that your render is gonna be. So I'm gonna position this right in front like our substance image. And I can go back to this guy and make sure it's, right now it's previewing from our perspective, so we wanna preview from our new camera. So I'm gonna play, and we're looking pretty good. Now, the biggest difference you're gonna find is lighting. The lighting presets that come in Substance are pretty awesome and ideal for this environment maps that they're set in. So to get it exact like Substance, is gonna take a little bit of work when it comes to your lighting. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time, like I said, I don't want this to be a lighting tutorial or anything. 
I don't know why we have these weird faces on the sides. My OCD, that would just bother me, so I'm just going to delete them. But I'm going to go ahead under Arnold Lights, and I'm going to create just an area light, just so we can look at the texture a little bit better. So I'm going to scale this up, position it, check normalize, and the exposure up, just because I want to see the light. And let's see where we're at. So it's looking pretty good, obviously. Substance has its light a little bit brighter and this background plane's a little bit darker. But either way, without getting too technical into things like lighting, you can see how easy it is to bring your textures right out of Substance Painter and bring them into Maya. All right, so really quickly before I wrap up this tutorial, I wanna show you that displacement map and how would I actually apply that and why I wouldn't apply it. So if I go back to my folder here, you can see it gave me this height map. So what I'm going to do is actually go into my texture nodes. Now that's up here in the hypershade. Now this is also really handy if you want to see how texture nodes work and you're new to it. So you want to see how they connect things and how things look. You can go up here to your turtle texture we created, right click and press graph network. And now it shows you all the texture nodes and how they're all connected. So when we applied them over here, in our attribute editor, they automatically connected all of these. So if you're curious how this stuff works, this is a good way to take a quick look. And I'm not gonna go over this in this tutorial. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how I would apply that height map. So first off, by pressing tab, you can press in file. So we need a file since we have a file we wanna load. And then we can go find that height map. So we can open that and assign it to that file. So now all we need to do is press tab and press displacement. So we have a displacement shader. Now we don't need this blue one over here because we already have our turtle one up here. So we can go ahead and delete that. Just have to connect these. And now because our scale is super high, you're gonna see this is gonna be a thick turtle as soon as I render this out you'll see it puffs up and that displacement map is being projected onto the model so that's not good in this case so maybe you could throw this down to like two and then you see he still has a little thick fingers but so in this case i wouldn't it wouldn't be benefiting me to use it. Now, I'm sure there's way better texture artists out there that can correct me, and I'm sure they could use this displacement map in some way to benefit this model, but when it comes down to my workflow, I personally wouldn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of these. If I re-render this, it's gonna go back thin. And that's basically everything. Uh, you could quickly go back to some of these settings. If you were gonna render this out now, I would change the image format to PNG or whatever you'd like, I choose PNG and you could go over to the Arnold renderer and just increase some of these so I would increase this to two and maybe just bump these up like maybe double some of these you don't have to go too crazy but that's probably what I would do and then just open up your render window and you could just render out that camera and that's basically it guys, that's the whole video and that's the whole process I would do with exporting my textures from Substance Painter and then linking them up in Maya to render out with Arnold. If you liked the video, give it a like and a subscribe and let me know in the comments if you want to see more tutorial based videos in the future. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next one.